thank you all for being here. This is, uh, this is really exciting. What's exciting about this is the opportunity to talk about entrepreneurship, about morality, about the function of entrepreneurs at a venture, at a university that em embeds that spirit. This is an entrepreneurial venture, a new university, a new project. And that to me is extraordinarily exciting. It's not like going to some old university that's been around forever and they don't, the professors and the administrators don't have a clue what entrepreneurship is because all they've ever done is studied it at school and then taught it in class. Here you have people who are living it every day. And that's unique, it's a unique opportunity for you as students. And I think a unique opportunity for the faculty and administrators as well. Let me also apologize that I'm not speaking Spanish. But given that I don't know any, it's probably a good thing. Um, that I don't try. So I want to start off with a question. What is entrepreneurship? It's a word that we throw out there quite easily, quite often, that we can discuss, we discuss, we debate. But to me it's important that we clarify terms. That we know what we are talking about. So what does it mean to be an entrepreneur? What does the idea of entrepreneurship mean? And, I, and my understanding is that this university is very much focused on the idea of entrepreneurship, that you as students will one day, the goal of the university is to help you, train you, to be entrepreneurs, not just to be engineers, but to be engineers who are entrepreneurial. But what does that mean? Now, I'm getting feedback from the... From the um... Okay, okay, that's right. So what does it mean when we say entrepreneur? Now, my definition of an entrepreneur is different than most. Most people consider an entrepreneur somebody who starts a business, right? You start your own business. That's an entrepreneur. But what is the basis for starting a business? Why would you start a business? What is it in the world out there that causes you to want to start a business? It's an opportunity. An opportunity to do what? What is business about? You can yell out if you want. What's business about? Making money, right? And it's it's a little embarrassing to say, and that's why we laugh a little bit, right? I mean, all audiences behave that way. <laughs> making money is why we start businesses. Business is about making money. Now, how do we make money? How do you make money? This is. Entrepreneurship 101. How do you make money? By doing what? What do you have to produce? What do you have to create in order to make money? Product, a service, a value that other people want to buy, are willing to buy, at a price that's higher than what it costs you to produce. So, why does Apple make a profit on the iPhone? You know, in America these are cheaper than they are here in Colombia, so this only cost me three hundred dollars. I know they cost more here. What's this worth to me if I paid three hundred dollars for it? What's this cost for me? Just yell out. What's it cost what's it worth to me if I paid three hundred dollars for it? You guys are shy. Yeah, South Americans are not supposed to be shy. Fifty? Then why would I pay three hundred? Why would I pay three hundred? Why would I bother to take three hundred bucks out of my pocket and give it to somebody if this is only worth fifty dollars to me? I'd stay at home. How much is it worth to me? A lot more. A lot more than three hundred. Because that's why I'm willing to give up 300 to get something more valuable to my life than the $300 that I'm giving up. So, an entrepreneur is somebody who creates a product that people value more than the price. Now, what's this worth to Apple? 
Yeah. More than 300? No. I know this is trivial, but just play along, right? Less than 300, because they make a lot of profit on this. Right? They make a lot of money on it. So entrepreneurship is about creating values that you can profit off of. And at the bottom line, I believe that entrepreneurship is about finding profit opportunities and taking advantage of them. Entrepreneurship fundamentally is about finding profit opportunities and taking advantage of them by making money. It could be by starting your own business and building a new product or starting a store or having an engineering service company. It could be by discovering a new way to get oil out of the ground, like fracking was a new way up until recently. And it could be working in a big company and discovering a new way for the company to make money. Entrepreneurs exist in companies and outside companies. It's not only about starting your own business, it's about discovering profit opportunities and taking advantage of them. And that can be done inside or outside a larger enterprise. But what's interesting is in spite of the fact that we all love entrepreneurs and we all kind of understand that that's what it's all about, there's a certain discomfort about the idea of making money. We're not that comfortable about it. And generally, in the culture we live in, at least in the United States, but I suspect in Colombia as well, there is a certain discomfort about markets, about free markets, about markets in which entrepreneurs can start businesses wherever they want, whenever they want, however they want to start them. Because the fact is that in Colombia and in the United States, we don't allow entrepreneurs to go out and do whatever they want. We re regulate them. We control them. We supervise them. We want to make sure that they do what we think is good. So what is it about entrepreneurship? Not the word, but the activity. What is it about profit that we feel a little uncomfortable about? Making money makes us... Uh, it's not, it can't be what life is really about. What is it about that that makes us uncomfortable? What is, what is business about, even broader than entrepreneurship? What's business about? Making money. Now, is it just about making money? Or even entrepreneurship, is it just about making money? What else is being an entrepreneur, being a businessman about, other than making money? Like Steve Jobs, did he make this iPhone only to make money? He made it to make money, right? We, we know that because the profit margin on this is 50%. If he didn't want to make money, if he only cared about me, then he would sell it for half price. That would be nice of him. But no, he wants to suck every last dollar out of me. But what else motivated Steve Jobs other than just making money? What motivates you? You're not doing this just to make money. What else motivates you? What's that? It's a speaker. Yeah, but why do you care about the utility of the iPhone when you create it? What is it about it that you, that, that motivates you to go to work, to go and create something like this? Yeah, we love finding solutions to problems. Particularly engineers, right? We love that math problem, some of us anyway, right? And by the way, I'm a civil engineer in a previous lifetime ago. It's been a while, but I, I was a civil engineer once, so I, I, I know a little bit about engineering. I, not, I don't remember much, but a long time ago I knew something. Um, we love the process of solving problems. We love getting up in the morning and, 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 and ch being challenged and going out and solving that challenge. Steve Jobs wanted to make the best phone in the world. He wanted to make a beautiful phone because Steve Jobs had an aesthetic, right? One of the things that made Apple strong is its aesthetics. Steve Jobs was not only motivated by money, he was motivated by beauty. He was motivated by the challenge. He was motivated by passion. He was motivated by love. Love of a beautiful product, love of the work 
love of the thought process, love of the challenge that's involved. And you should be motivated by love. Choose a career. By the way, Steve Jobs said this. I'm just, I'm just repeating what he said. That you can find it on YouTube if you look for Steve Jobs, Stanford University. He gave a speech at Stanford University and he told the students, he said, you will spend more of your life at work, working, than anywhere else. You will spend more of your effort, more of your energy at work than anywhere else. So make sure you love what you do. Make sure you have passion for what you do. Make sure that in the morning when you go to work, you're excited. You're not dreading it. Because it's your life. So Steve Jobs built this iPhone for whom? For Steve Jobs. To make money for Steve Jobs. And because Steve Jobs had a passion for this. To make him happy. He didn't know me. He didn't care about me. He didn't know you. He doesn't care about you. Steve Jobs made this of Steve Jobs. Producers. People who go to work. People who make stuff. Make it because they love it. Make it because they're trying to make a living. Now, when I bought my first iPhone, it was 2008, and the economy of the United States was kind of going into recession, spiraling down, right? So I went and bought my first iPhone because I wanted to stimulate the U.S. economy. Right? Because that's why you go shopping. You go shopping because you want to help your fellow man. You want to make sure people have jobs. You want to help the economy go along. Right? I'm not going to ask who believes that because I worry about anybody saying yes. No, why do you go shopping? For whom? For yourself. You go shopping for you. I bought the iPhone because I thought it was cool. I bought the iPhone because I thought it would make me more productive. I bought the iPhone for me. So one of the things that makes us a little uncomfortable about business, a little uncomfortable about markets, not a little, actually a lot uncomfortable about business and markets, is that business and markets are about what? They're about the pursuit of what? They're about the pursuit of self-interest. They're about the pursuit of making your life better. Whether you're as a shopper, as a consumer, or as a producer, as an employee. Free markets are about egoistic behavior. About me. Each one of us. Me. It's about your love for your job. Your profit from your job. Your challenging job. It's about my stuff that I want to buy. That's what my market, makes markets work. And markets reward people who are really good at that. Who find profits, who know how to make money, who are passionate about their work. They're the ones who get rewarded. They're the ones who advance. They're the ones who do well. It's a system of self-interest. It's a system that feeds on self-interest, that encourages self-interest. Once in a while they're savvy, because I know that everybody takes their headphones off. Now, what did our mothers teach us about self-interest, about being an egoist? Yeah, right? I mean, I can tell you what my mother taught me, right? Since I was this big. My mother taught me, think of yourself last. Think of others first. Sacrifice, that's good. That's noble. That's virtue. Selflessness. What does selflessness mean? Not thinking of self. Not taking your own wants, desires, passions into account. Thinking of others. That's the whole point of ethics we are taught. It's other people. You know what Steve Jobs is attacked for? There's a new book in Steve Jobs' life that says he was a horrible person. You know why he was a horrible person? Because he didn't do any philanthropy. He created the most successful company in the world. He changed my life 
He changed most of your life, actually all of your life, because if you don't have an Apple, you have a Samsung, which is copying Apple. He changed all of our lives. He changed the entire world. But he didn't do philanthropy. It's not good. Why is the fact that he changed all of our lives not enough? Because he made money doing it. Because he thought about himself. And because he loved what he did. We have a moral code. We have an ethical belief system. We, in the world today, no particular country, every world, that says that selflessness is good, sacrifice is good, helping others is good, giving is good, sharing is good, building, making, creating, profit, money, and not so good. That's why when I say business is about making money, you go, yeah, we know, but it's a little embarrassing. Because that's what our mothers taught us. Take somebody like Bill Gates, who changed the world with Microsoft. He made $70 billion for himself. But he changed the world. Not a human being on this planet has been untouched by Bill Gates' Microsoft. All of our lives are better because of it. How much ethical moral credit does he get from that? None. Actually, some negative. Because he made a lot of money. Too much money. I mean, there's a whole discussion now in the world about inequality. How dare somebody make $50 billion for himself? The fact that he created trillions of dollars worth for us, that doesn't count. Because he made $50 billion for himself. So... Now, when does Bill Gates become a good guy? Yeah, he leaves Microsoft. God forbid he should still make any money. And he starts giving his money away in a foundation. How many lives will he affect in a foundation? Some. Some. But a lot less than he did at Microsoft. A lot less than he did at Microsoft. How much more credit does he get at the foundation? A lot. That's cool. Giving is good. Making, creating, building, eh, not so good. You're not convinced. <laughs> How do we make Bill Gates a saint? I know this is a Catholic country, I have to be careful. Um, how do we make Bill Gates so admired that we build roads and name him after them, that we build sculptures, that we make paintings of him? Because he's not a saint yet. Why is he not a saint yet? Well, he hasn't died. And even if he died tomorrow, nobody would name a road after Bill Gates. Why? Because he's still rich. He still lives in a big house. And he seems to be having fun. Saints don't have fun. Right? You're experts in this world now. Bill Gates can only be a saint if he gives all his money away, moves into a tent, and he could bleed a little bit for us, suffer a little bit for us. Then we would admire him. But to me, that's all messed up. That's all messed up. Bill Gates had challenges. He overcame them. He used his mind to make his life a good life. He took care of his family. Yes, he lives in a beautiful house. Good for Bill Gates. He changed the world. But first and foremost, he made his, he really made his life mean something. He produced, he created, he built. To me, that's what deserves moral credit. That's what's good in life. That's virtue. The fact that he made $50 billion means that he created a lot of value. For you, for me, for all of us, for himself. 50 billion is a fraction of what he did for us. He deserves it. Good for him. It's a justice that he has 50 billion dollars given how much he's contributed to the world. He is a great entrepreneur. Should be celebrated. We should have sculptures for Bill Gates and Steve Jobs and many of the other entrepreneurs who are 
human history, who built stuff, created stuff, and yes, made a lot of money, because that's what entrepreneurs do, they make money. That's the whole point. If you're an entrepreneur and you don't make money, what is that called? A failure. It's a failure. The whole point is to find profit opportunities and take advantage of them. So, my view is, I want to challenge you in a sense. I mean, not in a sense, I want to challenge you. I want to challenge your very fundamental beliefs. Because I don't believe morality is about being selfless. I don't believe morality is about being, about sacrifice, about helping others. I believe morality is fundamentally about taking care of yourself, making your life the best life that it can be, living up to your fullest potential. Aristotle, the great Greek philosopher, said that the purpose of morality, the purpose of ethics, was to provide us with guidance, to provide us with the virtues and values that would lead to a great life, to a happy life, to a flourishing life. There's a word in Greek called eudaimonia, which is the purpose of life. And eudaimonia means happiness, flourishing. So the purpose of morality should be not to sacrifice, not to be selfless, but to be self-interested. To think about what's really good for me. What will make my life the best life that it can be. And that's not easy. It's not easy to figure out what's good for you. It's hard, just like entrepreneurship is hard. It's hard to figure out what's right for me. What's going to make my life good? What's going to make my, me happy? We make mistakes all the time. The question is, what do we do with them? So it's really important that we have some guidance. Like, what is the most important thing? If you cared about your own life, if you wanted to be a great entrepreneur, but more importantly, if you wanted to be a great person for yourself, what is the most important value? What is the thing that is most important? Well, what makes possible all human values? What's that? Love. Love's important, but you can't eat it. And it doesn't bring food to my table. What's that? Survive? Survive? Yeah, survival is important, but I'm asking what value makes it possible for you to survive? What makes it possible for human beings to survive? Because look, if you look around the room, look at your neighbor, you can look, they're not that bad. There's a lag in the translation, and they laugh like three seconds after I tell the joke. Um, <laughs> that was perfect, thank you. <laughs> yeah, two and a half seconds. If you look around the room, as an animal, as a biological entity, we are pretty pathetic. Just look at your neighbor. We're weak. We're slow, we have no claws, we have no fangs. I mean, you try running down, what's a good animal here that's like, like a bison? Do you have bison or buffalo? You know what a bison and a buffalo is? You try running down a bison and biting into it. You can't do it. We're not built for it. And yet, Last time I was in Colorado, I ate a great bison burger. And here I am. And where's the bison? So what is it? What is it that makes it possible for you to hunt a bison? For you to eat the bison burger? Yeah, it's your mind. What's uniquely human? What makes it possible for human beings to survive? What makes it possible for human beings to thrive? What makes possible every human value, from food to clothes, anybody here have the clothes making gene? Or the agricultural instinct? We don't have instincts. 
Not the way animals do. We have to figure everything out. If we don't figure everything out, we die as a species. Yet we thrive. We do fantastically well. We're living longer than ever. We have more technology than ever. We're richer than ever. All because of one capability that we have, and that is to use our reason, to use our mind, to think. One of the core principles I know of elites of the university is thinking. And it's not just a core principle of a university. It's a core principle of life. It's your number one, should be, your number one value. If you care about your life, if you care about being a good entrepreneur, if you care about being a great engineer, then the most important thing you should cultivate is your ability to think, your ability to use your mind, your ability to reason, your ability to observe reality, integrate the facts, solve problems. That's what we have this for. So we want to live in a world which leaves our minds free. That lets us think outside of the box. And people don't like it when you think outside of the box. Ask Galileo. I hear in Colombia, you could ask Uber. Right? You banned Uber. No Uber in Bogota. Because they've upset people, right? Because they think outside of the box. Right? Entrepreneurs. What's the whole point of being an entrepreneur? It's thinking outside of the box. It's thinking new thoughts. Every new piece of knowledge, every new thought upsets somebody. Uber upsets taxi drivers. Galileo upset the Pope. Every new thought upsets somebody. Even the thoughts I'm expressing right now, I'm sure I'm upsetting somebody. But that's good. I like to create cognitive dissonance. What is what are universities about, if not to stimulate thinking, to challenge you, to expose you to new ideas? So in my view, you should live for yourself. You should make your life the best life that it can be. And the way to do that, the way to do that is by using your mind is by rationally figuring out what values you should pursue in life. Just like you do a business plan, right? You guys will know how to do business plans by the time you leave here. You should have a, a, a life plan. You should devote as much energy, actually a lot more energy, to figuring out your life plan than you do a business plan. Because a business plan is just part of your life. So it's about living, which requires thinking. But thinking is not good enough. It's not enough just to think. We have to act on those thoughts. And what's the most important action we take based on our reason in order to survive? What do we have to do to survive? Once we've thought. Create. Yeah, create. Whether it's to create a weapon so we can shoot the bison down, whether it's to create a strategy so we can together hunt the bison, maybe build a, a trap, right? Whether it's to create agriculture. You know, people, human beings, supposedly have been around for about two million years. Two million years. How long have we had agriculture? 10,000. Can you imagine what kind of revolution that was? You think an iPhone is cool. Like when they invented agriculture, they really thought it was cool. And the first person to figure out that when you drop a seed on the ground and you water it a little bit, and a plant grows from it, that person was like an Einstein. That was an Einstein. But that wasn't good enough. That didn't create agriculture. Who created agriculture? Bill Gates of 10,000 years ago. He said, oh, if that works, if that works, I can turn this into an industry. I can sow seeds all along. And then we can cut it and we can sell it to people. He was the first entrepreneur. He saw a profit opportunity. He took science. He took scientific knowledge and turned it into a business. That's what entrepreneurs do. They take scientific knowledge and turn it into a business that makes money, that is profitable. So it's not enough to think. You have to act on those thoughts. 
And the primary action we need to take is to be productive, is to create value, is to make, build. And that's true of everybody. You're told that many economists that will tell you that what drives the economy is consumption. Have you heard that? Consumption drives the economy. We need more consumption because that's what will drive the economy. That is one of the dumbest ideas ever created by human beings. I'm sorry if there are any economists here. I, don't, you know, I guess I don't need to insult you. Uh, why? How do, what do we need to do before we consume something? Where do you get the money to consume? You have to produce. So to consume, you have to first produce. So production has to come before consumption. You can't consume unless you have a job. You can't consume unless you're creating something. You can't consume unless you're creating some value. And what are you consuming? Something somebody else produces. So there's production that you have to make, there's production somebody else has to make, and then there's consumption. Consumption can't be what drives an economy. Production drives an economy. How many of you have a problem of consumption? If you have money in your pocket, how many of you have real trouble spending it? Nobody has problems consuming. Consumption is easy. If somebody has a job, and if you're secure in that job, and they pay their bills, they're going to spend the money. The problem is the jobs. If you think economically, it's how do we create jobs? How do we create production? How do we stimulate economic growth through production, not through consumption? That's easy. Just give my wife some money. <laughs> Can we take that out of the video? Um, so, in my world, the moral view of the world that I have, that I learned from Ayn Rand, the purpose of life is to flourish. The purpose of life is to be happy. The purpose of life is to make yourself happy. Nobody else can do it for you. You have to do it. And that flourishing, that happiness, happiness requires, at the very least, two important actions. One, to be rational, to think, to figure stuff out. It's our tool, it's our means by which we know reality. And second, we have to produce. We have to work. We have to create value. That to me, if I see somebody like Bill Gates, like Steve Jobs, they're clearly rational, at least they work. They're clearly productive. They're clearly creating value. And you can see that by the fact that they're making money. Making money is a good measure of value creation. They're good guys. They're morally great. In my world, they're saints. They are the good guys. They are the moral heroes. They're the ones the statue should be built for. Because they did the kind of things that are make their life good. They thought and they acted in a productive way. Not because they helped all of us. That's just a bonus. But because they helped themselves because they made their life really, really good. And when you make your life really, really good, you help other people. Not because you're trying, because that's part of the way in which production works. We're all better off when we have billionaires in a free market. Not where the government steals money from some people and give it to the billionaires, but when we freely exchange, when we're free to create, when we're free to produce, and when we're free to trade. So, what I'm asking you to do is to rethink something very deep. Something your mother has taught you. Something that your preacher has taught you. Something that the philosophers have taught you. That morality somehow is about sacrifice. It's about others. It's about helping and sharing and giving and all this stuff. I mean, so, some of that is nice. I mean, it's nice to help and it's nice to share. But that's not what the essence of morality is. I'm challenging you to rethink morality and to say no. What the good is, what the moral is, is what's good for me. But 
properly good for me. Now, that sounds a little weird, right? Because that sounds like what I'm advocating for is to be selfish. And I am. <laughs> but what do we understand? What do we be taught that selfishness means? Selfishness means what? Is it a good thing or bad thing? Bad. Why is it bad? What kind of behaviors did selfishness encourage? Thinking and producing? No, nobody ever taught you that. I'm the first person who ever tell you that it's in your self-interest to think and produce. What does everybody tell you that selfishness would lead to? Come on, you can tell them. When you point to a kid in, in the schoolyard and say he's selfish, what do you mean? And he's a what? What's that? Speak up. Somebody translate. They only think about themselves, but it's not just that. It's not like this kid is thinking about, ooh, how I can make my life the best life that it can be. That's not what we, we point to. It's because he's going to lie, steal, cheat. He's going to exploit you in order to make himself better. That's the fear we have. That's what we've been taught. We've been taught that self-interest equals lying, stealing, cheating, being a really bad person. We've been taught that somebody who's self-interested is going to exploit you, he's going to take advantage of you. He's not going to care one iota about you. But that's nonsense. How many of you have ever lied? No, no, no. <laughs> lying is a really, really bad strategy if you want to take care of your own life. Lying is just plain stupid. Because one, you almost always get caught. And if you do it in business, what happens to people who lie in business? Nobody wants to do business with them again. The other businessmen shun them. And you get a bad reputation, and, it's, and you're not going to be successful. What happens in your personal life? If you lie to your wife once, maybe you can get away with it. But if you lie regularly to your wife, what's going to happen? She's going to leave you. If you lie to your friends and they catch you, they're not going to be your friends. <coughs> lying does not generate value. Lying is a destructive policy. It's bad for you. If you're really self-interested, if you really care about your life, you wouldn't lie. Because lying, among other things, is the opposite of being rational. What does rationality re require? What does engineering require? Do you know to solve an engineering problem? What is the first thing you need? Well, you got a problem. How are you going to solve it? What's the first thing you want? Facts. Information. Real facts. True facts. Because what happens if you introduce into your problem solving falsehoods? What's the solution going to be? Wrong. You're not going to be able to solve the problem. There's that term in computer science. It's called very simple. It's called garbage in, garbage out. That could be an engineering slogan, right? Garbage into engineering, garbage out. I use the wrong facts to build a bridge, it comes down. That's your mind. If you start lying, you're putting in garbage. You're going to get garbage out. If reason is really the most important thing, if rationality, thinking, the most important thing for your life, lying is a self-destructive strategy. It's bad for you. What about stealing? Oh, there's a pile of money there. Nobody's going to catch me. I'm just going to take it. And then I can consume. That's cool, right? Why not? Why is it bad for you to steal? What makes you happy? What, what, what makes a human being happy? What makes a human being feel good about himself, uh, uh, flourishing, success? Care you're leaving. What's that? Care you're leaving. 
that you care about your life. Is that what you mean? Oh, you earn your living. That's right. Earn your living. Yes. So what you need in order to be happy, in order to flourish, is self-esteem. Self-esteem. A sense, I am capable. I am good for this world. I can take care of myself. I am a value. And where do you get your self-esteem? Mostly, where do you get your self-esteem? Where are you going to be in your life challenged? Where are you going to be driven? It's in your career, in your job. We talked about the importance of being productive, right? Because that's where you get your self-esteem from. And when you earn money, even in the simplest job, I don't know if you remember, I don't know how many of you did this when you were kids, and you got your first job, and somebody paid you your first paycheck, or your first cash, and you earned it because you did something. That felt good. It feels good to know that you earned something that you deserve it, that you produce something, that you create it about, it makes you feel valuable. That's self-esteem. That's true happiness. It's built from that. When you steal something, what are you basically telling yourself? I can't make it. I can't produce. I can't earn it. I have to take somebody else's earnings. I have to live off of something else. I'm completely dependent on other people. It's not about me anymore, it's about them. It's destructive. You're never going to get self-esteem. On the contrary, it's going to destroy whatever self-esteem you have. Nobody who's a thief was ever happy, was ever flourishing, would ever have a sense of goodness about himself. Yes? But uh, Bill Gates wrong idea, Steve Jobs. Uh, Bill Gates didn't steal an idea from Steve Jobs. Uh, you might be referring to the fact that Bill Gates bought MS-DOS originally from another company for very little money because he realized the value of it and they did not. That was his genius. He never stole it. Now, he took an idea in a sense of the graphical interface from the Macintosh and turned that into Windows. But that wasn't stealing, that was taking, making his own spin on it, just like Samsung didn't steal the idea of a smartphone, but they certainly took an idea and they developed it, but he mixed it in with his own particular genius, his own capacity to market, his own ability to produce, but there was no stealing there. Stealing is using force to take somebody else's stuff, or lying to somebody to take somebody else's stuff. It's not about, you know, you can copy if what you're copying is not copyrighted, if what you're copying can, and then you add something to it and you make it different, which is what Steve Jobs and Bill Gates did. So we have this perception of self-interest as involving lying, stealing, and cheating, but the fact is all of those activities, lying, stealing, cheating, are all self-destructive. They're all bad for you. A true self-interested person doesn't lie, steal, or cheat. Not because he cares about you or me, but because he cares about himself. Now what about treating other people? Really self-interested person treats other people really badly because he doesn't care about other people, right? No. Most of our most important values come from other people. Friendship, love, trade. Those are all incredibly self-interested, right? I am friends with somebody because what? Because he provides me with something valuable. Friendship, conversation, shared values, we like to listen to the same music, but it's that shared something. It's that value that I get out of the friendship that keeps us friends. I don't know if you've ever had a friend where it's all one direction, right? One party's a giver, and the other one doesn't give at all. Doesn't last very long. At all. Don't try that with your spouse. Love is about trade. It's about give and take. It's about sharing values. It's about giving and taking. If it's all one directional, it doesn't last. And love, 
is the most selfish of all values. Why do you love somebody? Because they make you feel good. People tell me, no, 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 love is selfless. Love is about sacrifice. Try this one. The day of your marriage, go up to your spouse-to-be and tell them, honey, this is a huge sacrifice for me. <laughs> I'm not in this for myself at all. I'm just doing it as a favor to you. No. <laughs> Love is about me and about her, loving me. So it's about her, right? It's about two souls valuing each other, getting pleasure out of each other, gaining value from each other, right? That's what it's about. So, so being self-interested is not about not caring about other people. It's the exact opposite. It's about loving other people because you want that relationship and valuing other people who are productive. Because you gain from their productivity. I, in some sense, when, when Steve Jobs died, I had tears in my eyes. I don't usually get tears in my eyes when people die. But I, in some sense, love Steve Jobs. Because I really enjoyed everything that he created. I've been using Apple since 1989, Apple products since 1989. I love that those products. I love what he did, what he created, what he built. So I got teary-eyed when he died because I loved him. We love the people who produce value to us if we're truly self-interested. So, be self-interested by being rational, by being productive, by loving life. Loving values. Loving other people who produce and are rational and creative. Be entrepreneurs. Create values. Be the kind of people that we should love, that we should admire, that we should build sculptures to. Because you created something. You built something. You made something of the one life you have on this planet. And I'll just end with some, a little bit of politics. What economic social system, political system, makes entrepreneurship possible, makes self-interest possible, makes it possible for you to pursue your own happiness, to choose your values? What's that? Yeah, it's capitalism. Because what is the essence of capitalism? The essence of capitalism is freedom. A pure capitalist system basically says that the government does one thing and one thing only. It protects us from crooks, from criminals, from fraudsters. But other than that, leaves us alone. Leaves us alone to invent new businesses. Leaves us alone to pursue our happiness, to pursue our values, to pursue what will make us flourish. And you know, I don't know what's going to make you flourish, or you, or you, or you. You know. The government doesn't know what's going to make you guys flourish. No bureaucrat, as smart as he could be, no supercomputer could figure out what would make you guys flourish, because it depends on your passions, on your values, on your ideas, on your innovations, on your creativity. Happiness is individual. It's not collective. There's some principles. Be rational, be productive. But other than that, I like Beethoven, you like Mozart. So, if you're a real entrepreneur, and you really care about your own life, what you want is to be left alone. What you want is not to be forced. What you want is not to be coerced. What you want is not to be put in a straitjacket and told how to think and what to do and what not to do. What you want is freedom. And free markets are what freedom is. It means free of coercion, free of force. That's what capitalism is. Capitalism is not what Marx told you it was. It's not what most of our professors tell us it is. All capitalism is, is a system in which we are free. 
free from force. It's a system of private property that encourages us to be entrepreneurs, that encourages us to follow our passions, to build, create, and make stuff. So, if you want to be entrepreneurs, you kind of have to fight for your freedom because we live in a world where governments and your neighbors and your friends and the community want to restrain you, want to constrain you, want to tell you what kind of businesses you can open, when you can open them, how you can open them, what you can do, what you can't do. And that's tragic. And that's sad. So you got to fight for freedom. So, to summarize, I think entrepreneurship is great. I think making money is fantastic. I think building and creating values are wonderful. I think if everybody in the world pursued their self-interest, we would be in heaven already. And people who pursue their self-interest deal with one another very simply. We trade value for value. Win, win. That's what life should be about. Win, win relationships in every part of our life. So good luck, make a lot of money, be great entrepreneurs, thank you all.